All right, do you want to do some Green Day today? Let's do this. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something that I think we never did. We're gonna do some acoustic punk. Green Day, time of your life, good riddance, whatever that song is called. We're gonna do that today. So please subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna do so many breakdowns of songs in the future. And you guys are gonna learn all the cool little tricks to kind of get the vibe that the real song had. And that way, when you make your own songs, you're gonna be able to apply what you've learned with all of these old songs here on my channel. All right, this song by Green Day is quite simple, right? It's acoustic guitars and vocals only. Oh wait, and there's a massive strings arrangement as well, which I did as well. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. But let's start with the simple parts, the guitar and the vocals. One thing about acoustic production is that it's really hard to copy sounds because acoustic instruments sound very different from one to the other. And probably Green Day had a much more expensive guitar than I had. Green Day has a much better vocalist than I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they actually had real strings as well and I had to use plugins. So no matter how much I mix, it's never gonna sound the same as the Green Day version, right? So I thought for this video, it would be fun to focus on some recording techniques to kind of emulate what they were doing on the day they recorded this song. So first step, guitars. This is how the guitars sound in the final recording. Pretty cool, right? It sounds quite good. If you listen to it next to the original one, it doesn't sound quite the same, but the vibes there, my guitar is very poorly set up actually. I found out while I was doing the song. So now I think I gotta get my guitar to a professional so he can kind of fix it. But I, I managed to get quite a cool sound. Let me show you how I recorded this. Okay, welcome to the little guitar stool. So how they recorded this guitar. First of all, I think they use really tense strings because I tried using softer strings and it just didn't sound the same. I had to change all my strings to O2. So I'm using O12s here. I'm also using a soft pick because when I was using the pick that I usually use, which is harder, my guitar was buzzing all over the place. I'm quite heavy handed. So like having the soft pick helped me be a little bit more sensible to my guitar. Now the mic technique. This is a mic that was borrowed to me by a company called United Studio Technologies. It's called UT Twin 87 and it kind of emulates a Neumann U87. It has a modern and a vintage setting, which is really cool. The modern is quite modern sounding and the vintage one is darker and softer and more saturated, I would say. It has multiple polar patterns. It has a pad, it has a filter. It's really cool. But for the guitar, I'm gonna use the modern one because I need the brightness of my guitar to really come true because the guitar of the original track is quite bright. I'm also gonna leave it on cardioid because I just want the sound of my guitar. I don't want too much room sound. The guitar on that recording is quite dry. To record, I usually use the hang loose technique, which is a hang loose distance of my 12 fret. So you see, it's a little bit too far now. So what I'm gonna do is just put it a little bit closer like this, hang loose it a little bit, a little bit farther, hang loose it a little bit. That's good enough, I think. And also pay attention that I'm pointing it to the 12th fret from this angle. That way I get a little bit of body sound, but it's not pointing at the body because my guitar is actually really boomy. If I point this microphone to the body, it's gonna be a very boomy sound. And to do this song, I need more of a bright sound, not so much low end, you know? So I'm pointing away from the body, but still there's a little bit of the body coming here to the side, right? And that's how I recorded the acoustic guitar. Guitar. Also, one little last note. Acoustic guitars are very sensitive to the way you play them and I had to try multiple techniques to play as similar as possible to Billy Joe on this song and I found out that if I play closer to the bridge here, it sounds more like what he did because the guitar sounds quite pokey and dry. So if I play here, it doesn't sound quite right, but if I play here, Sounds much closer to the original sound. So always remember, you have to take into account when you're recording a song with an acoustic guitar, how you're gonna play it, because it makes all the difference. And every little movement that you do here, here, makes a massive difference with acoustic guitars. They're very hard to record. I think they're probably my biggest challenge to record a nice acoustic guitar sound, but yeah. 
that's how I did the acoustic guitars for this track. Okay, and for the mixing part of the acoustic guitar, you see I didn't do much. You see I took off a little bit of mids, put a little bit of high, some compression there. Fresh Air is a really cool free plugging that adds air to your sound. It literally just adds a really sparkly and smooth high end to the top end of your guitar. It's really nice. I really like Fresh Air. EQ8 cutting down a lot of the low end because this guitar didn't need low end at all. Saturation, this is another free plugin. Soft tube saturation knob. You see here, I have it on neutral and saturating the guitar just a little bit to get that old console vibe, you know, because we, we need that in our lives. And lastly, Sooth 2. This is an expensive plugin, but it's a really nice one. If you can't buy it, don't worry about it. It's not super necessary. But when you have unideal situations, I would say, like if you're poor like me and you can't afford a 2,000 pound or 2,000 dollar acoustic guitar, having Sooth there to kind of get the annoying frequencies out a little bit really helps. And now the other part, the vocals. The vocals in this track are quite dry. It's almost like you're in the room with him, quite intimate, you know? I think that's what they were going for with this vocal sound. So for this vocal sound, the only thing I did was change the microphone to vintage mode, because that way I would get a warmer sound. I find my voice to be quite nasally and annoying. So having this mic on vintage mode really smoothed out the high end. Of course, you can do that in mixing as well. And if you have multiple mics, you can choose the mic that suits your voice better. In the case of this mic, put it on vintage mode, still on cardioid, and again, we're gonna do the hang loose technique for the vocals as well. So for the vocals, it's the same idea as the guitar, the only difference is you're gonna be pointing directly to your mouth like this, and you're gonna do a hang loose. And I like to do the hang loose from my mouth to the middle of the mic, because that's where the capsule is, right? I like a good hang loose of distance between me and the mic, like this. Of course, my hands are very big, some hands are very small. You're gonna have to kind of work it out what sounds best for you. That's the hang loose technique, it's a good starting point. Then, pop shoot, always use a pop shoot because you need to get those plosives out of the way, right? You don't want to spit all over your mic and have the plosive sounds in your song in there. It's gonna make a mess when you're compressing as well. My pop shoot broke, but what I like to do is have the pop shoot where I am, that way I know that if I'm touching the tip of my nose to the pop shoot, I'm at the right hang loose distance. So yeah, pop shoot, very useful. This one's broken, I'm gonna have to get another one. Always use a pop shoot. And that's it, the rest was just singing, really. I try my best, I'm not as good as him, but I try my best and this is how the vocals sound. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. First thing I did with my vocals, if you zoom in here, you see that I cut my vocals all up like this, cause sometimes I sing a little bit louder, sometimes a little bit quieter. This is a very dynamic song, has very high pitched parts, very low pitched parts. So some parts were quieter like this, some parts were louder like this. I wanted not to completely make everything sound the same volume, but I wanted the higher peaks to be a little bit quieter so my compressor wouldn't work like crazy later in the mix. So what I usually do is if I have a big big peak like this, like this one here for example, I press command E, I double click the clip like this and I turn it down here in Ableton Live. That way your compressor is going to work a little bit less and it's going to sound a lot better. So that's a cool little trick. Always do that volume gain kind of thing with your session. Also, you can see I have two vocal tracks here. I'm not doubling this time. This was just me trying out the modern and the vintage setting from this mic. This is how the vintage mode sounds, the one that I chose in the end. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. And this is how the modern one sounds. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. See how different that is. That's pretty crazy. This is just a little switch here that makes all this difference. Of course, there's transformers inside and all that stuff, but it's quite cool. Went for the vintage one because I thought the Billy Joe vocals sounded quite vintagey. Quite cool. For the guitar, I did the same thing, and the guitar went with the modern mode just because it's brighter. You can really hear the difference between the modern guitar and the vintage guitar. Check this out. <laughs> So for the guitars, I needed the bright, bright high end, but for the vocals, I wanted to take down my bright, annoying high end and make my voice a bit smoother. So that's something you always have to think, not only with this mic, but with any mics, if you have multiple mics, which one's darker, which one's brighter, and which one's gonna work best for whatever you're doing. So for the vocal processing here, I did a compressor. It's just a very fast compressor, taking the peaks out of my voice. 
Another turning point of Fox stuck in the road. Then a glue compressor doing a stronger compression and bringing all my vocals together. But this time I have a slower attack and slower release just to make the compression sound less noticeable, but still bring all my vocals closer together. Another turning point of Fox stuck in the road. Some de-assing here. Any de-assing plugin works. This is just the one that I have, but de-assing is always necessary, right? Next one, hybrid reverb right here. Because I only have one vocal track in the song, I could just stick the hybrid reverb on the track and use the dry wet knob to do the mixing. I put it on convolution mode only. You see right here, all these modes. I'm only using the convolution mode down here and I'm using early reflections, small ambience at 19% mix and I took the stereo down a little bit because I just want a little bit of a roomy sound on the back of my vocals. I don't want full on reverb because this song is quite dry on the vocals. I want just the sensation of an ambience in there. So I just chose a small ambience and mixed it really quietly here on my track. Another turning point of Fox the in the road. You see, it just places me in a room, which is nice. All right, and the rest is just a little bit of maintenance here. I have EQ8 cutting a bunch of low end and some really high, high end here, just smoothing it out a little bit. My voice was quite raspy, so I took a little bit of the raspiness out. Just a little bit of maintenance here. Then MagEQ putting a little bit of air in there. MagEQ has this really cool band called the air band here. And you can see that I'm pushing it quite a bit just to make my vocals a little bit more airy, but not so raspy. Let's hear a before and after here. Another turning point of Fox the Kinder Road. Another turning point of Fox the Kinder Road. And lastly, Soothe. Again, it's a maintenance thing. My room is not perfect. My voice is not perfect. So I'm using this de honk preset here on Soothe just to soothe my vocals a little bit. Let's do a before and after. Another turning point of Fox the Kinder Road. Another turning point of Fox the Kinder Road. It really gets the annoying parts of my voice out of there, which I really appreciate. And lastly, I had to do the string section. Unfortunately, I'm not Green Day and I cannot call a string quartet to just come into my house and record them playing my song. But we have plugins nowadays, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Abbey Road 2 by Spitfire Audio. I've shown this on my channel before. The cool thing about this plugin is you can come here and just choose your instrument and the plugin kind of places your instrument. If it's the cello or the violin or the bass or the viola, it's gonna place it kind of where the person would be seating on the room playing those instruments with their friends in the quartet, right? So I didn't even pan anything really. It was so hard to do this because I had to listen to the song multiple times and get the line of each string instrument by itself. I don't know if I got it 100% right, but I think it sounds pretty similar. Literally, you can see here how many cuts I have in this track. And if I open the take lanes here, you can see all the take lanes that took me to record this track. I think I literally went four bars at a time, listening to the original track, getting that little piece of the line, and recording it here. Also, I left all my plugins here. Let me just mention this quickly on legato mode. Legato mode is what makes your string sound like the player is sliding from one note to the other. It's much more emotional, emotional feelings all the way for the song. So have this quiet little string here in the beginning. Then I have the bass, the cello, another cello, viola, and violin. It's actually a quintet, but that's all of the instruments that I had inside Abbey Road 1. And this is how all together sounded. Life. That's it. What did you guys think? Did you think that I got close enough to the original one? Did you like it? Did you learn anything? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna post a separate video with the entire track for you guys to listen to. So check that out on my channel. Also, some links are gonna appear here, probably linking you to that song. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please press all the buttons around me that help me in this road. And I see you all next time. Bye. Something unpredictable, but in the end it's bright I hope you had the time of your life